All right, guys. Today we are gonna be reacting to how the United States ruined bread. Man, that's a great question, man. And I love bread, but guess what? I have to go back to the old school and making my own bread because our bread is trash, man. I don't know what it is. What it is? It doesn't look like bread. It's floppy. It's weird. I don't know. Let's see what's going on here. I love. Bread. There is so much good bread in France. And although man doth not live by bread alone, without it the meal seems incomplete. On every corner there is a bakery that is pumping out delicious, fresh, well-made bread. It's so fresh. This is not easily available to me, and I want to know why. Why is it that the bread that I can get easily looks very, very different? Why is it that the U.S. sucks at making bread? In fact, let me just show you what that looks like. Okay, wait, it's 12 hours earlier, uh, still back in the U.S. I'm, I'm actually at a grocery store right now. Yep. This is how... Yeah, that's not... That's, <laughs> that's not about right. Already. A lot of us Americans get our bread. Sigh. My favorite part is when they make this plastic look like it's steaming. It's just like foggy plastic to be like, this was just baked right now. And it's like, no, this was actually baked like three weeks ago in a factory in like Connecticut. It's even made with real butter. <laughs> Always buy Wonder Bread. You'll be glad you did. The reason I'm purchasing this bread is because I want to bring it with me to, to France just to like have an example lesson and I may use it as a pillow because it's literally as soft as a no- <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying! Man, it's so fluffy bro. It's, it, the fact that it's so fluffy is so dangerous. Like, Nova foam pillow. <laughs> Some of this bag bread is made with ingredients that are literally illegal in the EU. Back to France, let's do it. There is nothing more American than Wonder Bread. I'm going to France. In case you're wondering, yes, any video from Paris must include music like this. Nice, gentle cafe accordion music. There's my composer Tom making it right now. Pretty cool. It's just so good. Okay, so yeah, we know that France is good at bread and the US sucks at it. Is this just another video where I shit on the USA for being terrible at certain things? Yes, it is. That's exactly what it is. But hear me out, I actually have something. It's okay, man. It's okay. We're here for it. I'm ready for it. To say here, I believe that bread is a really important symbol for a bigger cultural phenomenon in the US. And that's what I want to talk about today. Where industrialized bread came from, why it exists, and how some people are trying to change it. I'll get to that explanation, but first I'm gonna go into that bakery over there and buy myself a large ball of butter and flour stuffed with chocolate. Mm. Oh, and Tom, can you throw in a beat to this accordion music, please? Yeah. Thanks. Any questions? Um, yes. Are you going to finish that croissant? I I don't even remember when was the last time that I really eat a nice piece of bread. Ah, it's hurtful, man. It's so far, it's so hard to find it unless you make it. My wife said three weeks ago. Pause. My yeah. job is to make videos. Three weeks ago, we got the bread for New York guys. Videos for you, and the reason I'm able to do that is because there are brands that support this channel. This video in particular is sponsored by BetterHelp, and I'm grateful for that because. Okay, we we get it. You have to make money, but I'm gonna move it forward. Better help, and thank you, Better Help, for supporting this channel and the journalism that I do. Let's dive back into the video. Okay, so why bread? There's a million other things I could talk about that are better in other parts of the world, but it turns out that bread is the most important prepared food that humans have ever made, and therefore yeah. it is worth talking about. So let me explain in under a minute the overview of the tens of thousands of years of history of bread mm -hmm. and its chemistry and why it's so important. Don't think I can do it in under a minute? Mm -hmm. Check this out. 12,000 years ago, humans realized that they could plant this grass instead of just foraging for it. This grass was called wheat. 
And when it was ground up with a stone, it made this powder that, if you put water with it, creates this stretchy, goopy thing that has a bunch of sugar from the flour that's been released. Oh look, wow. all the bacteria in the air love this sugary goop. Nice. And they descend to feast on it, burping out gas as they eat. Whoa, the gas can't float up into the air because it's getting trapped in this stretchy ball of goop, like a balloon, like a pillow, like magic. Magic. All this feasting and burping is making it rise and turn into a pillowy thing that is way bigger than it was. Put this blob next to some fire and all of the little bubbles that were just created turn hard. Wait, all of this can happen because of this one grass? Yes. Cool, let's plant a lot more of this grass and build all of human civilization off of it, said humans. Society. So that is Man, bread. Know, like the no, There's nothing better than a nice toasty ready kind of you know like a nice toasty bread with butter in the morning like when you get a piece of it you hear that crunch on it oh my god mm. the oldest and most important prepared food item that humans have ever invented eventually humans got really good at doing this bread flour water yeast thing and especially here in France, they took it really seriously and have created a whole culture around making bread delicious and amazing. And you can see that they've continued that culture today just by the number of bakeries that exist in this city. There are 30,000 independent bakeries in France. Compare that to the 3,000 that are in the United States. And then remember that there the US go. has like a much larger population. And if yeah, you do all there the- There you go, that, that's the problem. The problem is just because we want to, it's just a mentality that we want to buy cheap, right? Instead of saying, oh, no, no, I have to buy quality. I have to buy quality. It's a mindset thing. Math, you see that France has 50 times more bakeries per capita than the United States. 50 times. I mean, that is such a clear indication of how much w they value good bread mm -hmm. that is baked a certain way. I'm here with Mr. Local over here. Yeah. <laughs> Local French food in France. Yes. 94% of Parisians live less than five minutes away from a bakery. And That's that shows you they care. They care. Yeah. It's like you, you, you hear stuff like that and you're like, uh huh. That, uh, th this is their priority. Yeah, yeah. And the culture of, of eating is just as much important here as how like the ingredients are sourced and prepared and whatnot. Yeah. People don't eat while rushing towards their next meeting or whatever. Like it's very much, no, you sit down, you make it a. I was about to say, it seems like more like you sit down and just enjoy your bread. No, no, no. Just sit down, your bread, and then you go to your meeting thing it's just a part of the way of life here yeah people come into the boulangeries almost on a daily basis wow. and they check in with each other it's like uh hey how you doing you know i'm doing great this is what's happening why 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 that is the question why are these bread cultures so different and the answer comes down to what America was founded on. I mean, a reminder that America is a country founded by a bunch of people who left their country to go make a new life, to do things differently, to do things more individualistically. And the way that expressed itself for a really long time was mechanization, industrialization. And to be clear in the history, Britain was as much to blame for all of this mechanizing of bread as America was. That's insulting. But anyway, we're talking about the USA for a little bit. So by the 1920s, you had this machine that was invented, an automatic bread slicer. Hello, convenience, innovation, America. No more serrated knife versus a tough, crusty loaf. Mm. Now the machine will do it for you. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh, so that's where we're at. <laughs> man, this guy know how to make videos, man. He's good, though. He's very good. <laughs> he caught me right there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let me go back because that's a very uh, popular saying here in the United States. Gene <laughs> will do it for you. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh, so that's where we're at. This is the greatest thing, says America. And Europe was like, wait, yeah, we like machines too, but like not for bread. Slice this bread and you make your bread spoil faster. We don't need a machine for sliced bread. But the automatic slicer was just the beginning for America. No, I'm just getting warmed up. 
now that we have sliced bread that, yes, spoils faster, let's make it, I don't know, not spoil as fast. One way to do this is to take the part of the wheat berry that has oils in it, the husk and the bran, and get rid of it. Focus on the big carb loaded berry in the middle. But there had to be a more industrial solution to make the bread last longer, to be whiter, to be softer. And it's the 1950s and Europe is like, whoa, dude, America, chill out. Like bread is just bread. We've been doing this for literally tens of thousands of years. Let's just like stick to the program. And America's like, no. So America starts adding all of this stuff to their bread, bleaches and dough conditioners. And suddenly they're putting their bread into controlled chambers so that it will be hot enough to rise faster. And they're putting preservatives in so that their bread can now sit on a shelf for not just one or two days like it should, but four days, five days, six days, a whole week, and it's still soft. It is still white. It is still spongy and delicious. But it now has 15 ingredients instead of three. And it's cheap and convenient and stable, and America is loving this, and Europe is like, whoa. You took this way too far. This is not bread anymore. And indeed, I would argue that this is not bread anymore. This is a bread-like substance. It's a different product made from a different process, and yet we use the same word for it. If you want to know more about what's inside... Not only that, it's, it's one of, it costs a lot of uh, spike in your sugar, too, man. It costs a, The reason it's fluffy, I don't know. It has sugar in it. A bad sugar. So... That white processed sugar. This kind of bread. I was actually here making this video when I stumbled upon a video from one of my favorite YouTubers, Adam Ragusea. That's like a deep dive into all of the ingredients in this kind of industrial bread. Definitely go check it out. Some bread in the US has taken it so far that they will put in additives that keep it spongy and soft or that keep it really white. Even though these additives are known to like cause cancer and inflame asthma and do all of these terrible things. Many of these additives that are legal to be put in American bread are literally illegal in Europe and many other countries. Azodicarbonamide is one of them. This is a whitening agent. But you know what? This product, ADA, also helps other things stay softer, like yoga mats. Man. ADA is in yoga mats to make them wow. spongy and soft, and it is banned in the EU and many other countries. Our obsession with convenience, cheapness, softness, shelf life has led us down a really dangerous path, and yet we're totally okay with it somehow. This is why I think bread is a useful symbol for broader American culture, it shows us how far we are willing to go to prioritize things like cheapness and convenience that's what over I said. tried and true methods. What? That's what I said. And that's that's my path right now, man. We we try. We already starting to make a lot of things from scratch because this is crazy, man. Our, our, you go to a supermarket and see a lot of these breads in the corner and that fluffy weird bread. I don't buy it. Man, it's so bad. Uh, that have been baked into culture. Of course, industrialized bread exists here as well. It doesn't have some of the carcinogenic ingredients that are not allowed in the EU, but it still has all of the dough conditioners, bleaches, still artificially risen, all of that. The difference is that it is rare. It is much more rare here. What is much more common is the ability to go to your local bakery and get bread that only has a few ingredients. And it's the ingredients that humans have been using for tens of thousands of years to make this staple food. The feeling that I generally have is that this is how it should be. And then when I go elsewhere and you have other kinds of bread that, that last kind of bizarre amounts of time, you know, you're like, this is not really how it should be. You get calibrated to kind of this new standard here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it kind of ruins you. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out Paris is low key one of the most bikeable cities I've ever been in, but it used to not be like that. Like last time I was here, it was not this bikeable. I smell some urban design policy changes at a mm. here. Someone tried to change this in the U.S. a few years ago, a company called Panera. What could be better than a visit to Panera Bread? Tried to bring like European bread culture to the United States. And they did, they had high quality, delicious bread. But what happens next is p potentially the best metaphor for America. Hello, 
I like money. They got a business loan so they could expand. And then they got investors and they started to expand and scale. And then they were purchased in a massive merger. And now they're planning to go public on the public stock exchanges. Like they just became a massive corporation who does not focus on making quality artisan bread. Instead, they're now just a machine pumping out bread that kind of looks and feels like European bread, but is now done in a uniform. But I don't think a, a company is gonna change it. I don't think a company is gonna change it. It has to be individuals. You have to propose it, because if you change the individual, you do a lot of videos like this and showing Americans and like me, I never, I, I never thought about making bread my, myself ever, folks. It's only when I started reacting to these videos that I started saying, you know what, hey, maybe I need to start doing my own bread. Maybe I need to start doing, you know, just start learning and start realizing a lot of stuff. And that's where it's changed, right? That's when it starts changing. Form mass produced industrialized process, all in the name of scale and profit. <sighs> wow, they have it, canned bread. So the question is, why does Can't this matter? Bread, bro. Like, am I just being a snob who's like, traditional bread is better and therefore everyone should have it and I hate America. That was snobby, you're a snob. Uh, no, I'm not. Kind of, yeah. But also, it actually makes a difference in how it goes into your body. Yeah. The beauty of bread always was that you could put this goop out in the air and bacteria would come down and start to feast on it and kind of start the digestion process. That is what natural fermentation mm. does is it starts to break down the wheat and make it ready to go into your body. The way that we make bread in America doesn't really leave time for this. We use heat and chemicals to speed this process up, to make it rise faster, to make it rise bigger in an artificial, synthetic way. And so you're actually getting a much inferior product to what original bread making looks like and what it produces. Yes, it lasts longer. Yes, it tastes like chewy, pillowy, sugary heaven, but it's not bread the way that humans have been eating it for tens of mm. thousands of years. Convenience, scale, independence, that is what we love in America. We love shelf life. We love industrialized efficiency. And to me, yeah, all that stuff is super great because it means we get to live these wonderful, prosperous, convenient lives. But I think we lose something really big when we focus on those as the priority, as opposed to quality and community and culture. Important. Last thing I'll say here is that this is slowly changing. You have a movement in the US of people making some mm -hmm. of the best bread in the world using the most traditional methods and ingredients. In these big cities, you have amazing bakeries doing bread. Yep. You know what's crazy? I was literally thinking about that myself right now is on par with anything you could get in Europe. Yep. And that kind of blows my mind. The problem is, and my critique, is that that is still so rare and specialty and really only available to people who live in big urban But areas. it's a start, you know what I'm saying? It's a start. You can literally, hey, you can literally start right now, just do videos like this and you start yourself and just do it, right? Like, there he is. And meanwhile, the time. rest of us, the most accessible bread to us is this industrial, mass-produced garbage. garbage. Belongs in the trash! And that is enough. You know what's crazy? Before you throw it out, I know that you took a couple of pieces. <laughs> you survived. You actually took some of the pieces and ate it. <laughs> to make me pretty frustrated. Very good video, man. There you go. A shout out to the guy that just recommended this video. You know, he, 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 he took some of those pieces and put it in his mouth. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you in the next one.